Let's now look at how we can shield radiated electromagnetic fields. So typically non-magnetic conductive shields are going to work well here also. And so what that means is we don't have to worry about that high permeability, expensive, heavy material that we do when we're shielding magnetic fields. And the reason for that is because our electric and magnetic fields are traveling together, a conductive material will reflect our electric field and our magnetic field is just kind of along for the ride. So of course, we're still going to need to have openings. Whenever we have openings though, we wanna keep them small. And of course, we just wanna do that when it's necessary. So in order to look a little closer at how we can shield radiated EM fields, let's think of a common example. So one source of radiated electromagnetic fields that everybody is familiar with is a microwave oven. So a microwave oven works by heating the food with electromagnetic waves. And so typical powers of our microwave oven are about 1000 watts or one kilowatt. And the frequency is 2.45 gigahertz. So 10 to the ninth. But we know that we have this window on the front of our microwave and we can see in, we can see our food cooking. So obviously that's not a solid conductor like we saw we needed for our electric field. So how is that okay? So how is our window okay? Because we have this relatively large power of a thousand watts, yet we can still see through it. And so the answer is that if we look closely, we can notice that there is a mesh conductor or sort of a grid, a mesh that has a conductor with several holes in it. And so this is sort of close up looking at this mesh screen. And so it turns out that each of these holes have a diameter of approximately 1.5 millimeters and a center to center spacing of 2.5 millimeters. Okay, so somehow having these small holes is okay. So in order to get a better understanding of why that is, let's come back to this frequency of our 2.45 gigahertz and calculate the associated free space wavelength. So in free space, our EM wave is gonna be traveling at the speed of light, so C, and that's divided by our frequency. So we would have three times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by our 2.45 times 10 to the ninth hertz or per second. And so we get that this is approximately 122.4 millimeters. So this would be our wavelength of these microwave waves in our free space. So comparing that to this 1.5 millimeter diameter for our screen, so we can say our 1.5 millimeter divided by this 122.4 Clean that M up a little bit, is equal to about 1.225%. And so it turns out that if our hole is much smaller in every direction of our wavelength, then we're not going to have a significant amount of energy that's able to sort of pass through that hole. So we can say that coming back to our question here, we can say in this case, this is okay if we have these holes, as long as they are smaller than our wavelength in every direction. And so let's say as long as our hole is only a few percent of our wavelength. And so we are gonna, of course, have some energy leaving through these holes, but it's, it's just small enough that it's not going to make a difference. So one other thing that we kind of touched on a little bit earlier is instead of having these conductors, uh, in this case, that are reflecting our radiated electromagnetic waves, or in our previous video, we talked about our conductor providing a path to ground for our electric field. So another option is instead of doing that, we could include some absorbing material. And so we kind of touched on this a little bit when we talked about our coaxial cable. So instead of reflecting or providing a path to ground, we can absorb. A 
path to ground, we can use some absorbing material, which is essentially just going to absorb the energy that's in that electromagnetic wave such that it doesn't have energy to continue propagating. And so we can use this to reduce, ultimately reduce our electromagnetic interference then. Um, so just quickly, I'll talk about one example and one application. So an example of material would be a carbon doped foam plastic. And then one application sort of well beyond the scope of of our class here, but just sort of a cool application to note would be stealth aircraft. And so of course, the way radar works is radar is sending out these electromagnetic waves and it's interpreting how they're reflected to determine the location of certain items in space. And so what stealth aircraft do is they take this idea of having absorbing materials to sort of have a minimal footprint as seen by the radar, the electromagnetic waves that that puts out. So again, sort of the details of that are obviously well beyond our scope, but it's just a cool application that sort of ties into this idea of electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic radiation.